Hey guys, it's Sick Motion here with uh, 5.8 patch notes. This patch came out a while ago. I normally do them the day after. I was on vacation when this patch came out, so I actually haven't played League. Well, I played a couple games today, but I hadn't played League for seven days. That's the longest I've gone without playing in quite a while. It was really weird, and I didn't really know how to play anymore. And on top of all of that, to make it even more confusing for me, uh, my patcher broke. Um, the repair button broke, everything on it broke, so I had to actually uninstall and reinstall. So all my key bindings, sound settings, interface, um, everything that you're kind of used to and familiarized with, but don't really remember the settings for in a lot of cases, like the key bindings obviously, but the other stuff didn't really know how to make it go back to 100% the way it was, so it felt even more unfamiliar to me. So that was a little painful, but it's mostly fixed, I hope, I think. Um, but uh, other than that, let's get into these patch notes right here. Let's move these patch notes slightly over because they're not centered and it's bugging me. There we go. All right, so this patch was actually quite a big patch. This video will probably be a little bit longer, especially with my long intro there. Uh, patch 5.7, um, big change to rise and new items. Well, reworked items and a couple changes to current items. I'm just going to skip through all that boring stuff. Also, since I've done this patch so much later than... Um, it came out. There's uh, hot fixes here, so I guess there was um, some some bugs, mainly just bug fixes. Um, kind of, I won't won't bother going through that. It's it's a bunch of bug fixes and visual fixes. Uh, so let's go down here, down here, down here. Um, added a new option before any champion stuff to disable HUD spell clicks, um, where abilities uh, can now be aimed through the HUD and um, can be aimed through self-ally portraits. A couple times I've uh, I've had my mouse too far over. It's been on the mini-map, and I would shoot an ability backwards if I was trying to aim it a different way. Um, just, it's just kind of weird things like that, so I'm assuming that just got tweaked and fixed. I haven't tried it, so I'm not too sure myself what that is exactly um, going to feel like. And uh, fixed a bug where a player would misfire their ability in a different direction if their cursor landed on the minimap. Generally speaking, short range abilities. Um, yeah, so so that's that. Here's the rise change um, right off the beginning, completely out of alphabetical order. Uh, general changes: they lowered his base mana regen. Uh, they increased the mana regen stat. They lowered his base armor growth. Um, his new passive. Now, every five uh, stacks, you get a stack for casting a spell, but it's not permanent stacks. It's kind of like Jax's passive, that you have to keep it active, or else it'll drop off. Um, it's not like Annie's passive, where you can hold that stun forever, for example. Uh, I actually played a game with Rise. I just played one game with Rise just to test it out before I did this, just to get a feel for it, and it, it felt very different from Old Rise. Very different. I was missing all my cues, because I was just face rolling and they were going in different directions the hitbox is pretty narrow on it so you actually have to aim it so um i was just missing a lot of my potential damage because uh, i was just so used to having to uh just apply face to keyboard rather than aim as well so uh let's see here rise becomes supercharged for three four five six seconds it increases with um that the total time that you're charged up increases with the level of your ultimate so at level zero of your ultimate, you have three, and then it goes up one, two, three, and doubles up to level six. Uh, you gain a shield that blocks 20 plus five per level, um, just as a, a raw shield, but then it's also 8% of your maximum mana, and that's max mana, not current mana. So uh, the damage... Um, sorry. Damage and causing a spell cast to reduce cooldown of other spells um, by overloads cooldown to a minimum of 2.5 seconds. That sounds kind of confusing, so I'm going to explain it right now from what I um, was experiencing. Overloads cooldown is 4 seconds without any CDR. So once you have this active, casting um, any spell will reduce the other cooldowns of your other spells by 4 seconds. So it's not the 1 second that you're used to with Old Rise, it's, it's 4 in this example, it, that that four seconds goes down as you get CDR. Say you um, say you had enough CDR to put it to uh, your overload cooldown to three seconds. You um, you had 25% CDR here. It would uh, reduce all your other cooldowns by three seconds. But keeping in mind, all your other cooldowns will be reduced by 25% as well. So that kind of stays in line, um, rather than making it um, a flat cooldown reduction. Because if you got a flat cooldown reduction 
then it would scale too well with CDR on your other spells, plus the flat after the percentage scaling. So it, the way they balanced it out. Uh, it has a lower max mana ratio, but the mana ratio scales per level. So stacking a ton of mana early on doesn't give you that damage. It does a little bit more damage um, throughout the game, actually quite a, quite a bit for base. Uh, the mana costs have gone down all across the board. It's half mana at level one, and then it goes up by five per level. It doesn't start at 60. So stacking all that huge mana, like mana rune, start with a mana crystal, you can still do that, but it's not as necessary feeling because... Your spell costs half of what it used to cost, and the damage that you get from it is a lot lower of a of a total percentage here. The missile width is 50. That's that's teeny tiny. Uh, it's a skill shot. That's kind of the most big change here. So it's a skill shot, as I was explaining before, and um, the range on it uh, went from 625, so just under a Caitlyn auto attack, to 900. So it's it's a lot longer now as well. But it's a skill shot. It'll uh, collide with the first thing it hits. You can't hit people that are standing behind minions like a Morgana Cage. It got an increased ability power ratio as well. So the AP ratio is going to be a lot stronger early on than your maximum mana percentage, obviously. And the cooldown went up a little bit. But you have a lot more. It doesn't give you um, cooldown reduction in the skill anymore um, as you level it. But your ultimate gives you a ton of CDR. We'll talk about that in a second here. Uh, Rune Prison, percentage max mana ratio went down. AP ratio went down. Its base damage um, also went down after level uh, 2. At level 3, it starts to be lower. At level 1, it's actually 5 higher. But the spell overall just does less. Um, it also goes up in mana per level. It doesn't throw on here, but that's what it did before. So the mana cost goes up. The cooldown doesn't go down. But the um, the duration of the snare still goes up as you level it. I'm still not um, entirely sure if I like leveling this or E second, because the E's damage doesn't go up that much, and the snare actually helps you hit your Qs now. That's something that everyone always joked about before. Oh, Rise, no skill shots. Or you're really good at skill shots for playing Rise. Now you actually have to hit a skill shot, so be keeping them snared will make it a lot easier. One uh, one snare duration is going to let you hit like two or three cubes, 100%, as long as there's nothing in between you with the way that your passive works when it's charged. Um, so the spell flux, kind of interesting. Um, it'll hit its initial target, and then it'll bounce to up to six additional targets, um, hitting all of them. And then it'll come back to your initial target, dealing uh, the return damage. It's, it's, it's just half. Uh, the ratio is half, the AP ratio is half here, uh, the base damage is half. But depending on how many additional targets it hits, and it also can bounce to you, it obviously doesn't do damage to yourself, um, but say you have five nearby targets, you're in a minion wave, you hit one of them, there's five other minions, it'll also bounce to you, so that counts as six orbs coming back to it, all doing half damage. But since they're all doing half damage, um, it'll do three times as much as the base damage. Little little bit of math stuff to think about here. Um, it also lowers magic resistance, stacking up to three times. The way it stacks is the initial damage does... Um, it's also percentage now. It's not flat, so it, it's not as devastating early, but it actually helps a lot more as the game goes on. At max level, that's 12%. Stacking up to three times, that can be 36% magic pen. So it can be pretty strong. And you can spam this ability really hard in team fights to, to keep that stack up on multiple people um, using your passive. So uh, the way it works is the initial cast gives you one stack, and every orb that hits the that person that bounces back, it'll give you another stack. So as long as it hits two people and then bounces back, or one person and yourself and bounces back, that person will have the, the three stacks onto them. And uh, also, if your initial target dies, it does, obviously doesn't bounce back to it because it's dead. Um, if your initial cast kills the target, it doesn't. I don't think it. Don't quote me on this, but I don't think it was bouncing to the other ones. Um, it didn't look like it was. So a you, you, couple things you got to watch out for when using this spell. But it, it's actually really good wave clear without relying on your ultimate for the AoE damage. Your ultimate still does give you that AoE damage, 50% um, of the nearby damage. So it. it it can get pretty devastating with your E in large clusters. Uh, the cooldown of your ultimate is higher at level uh, 1, lower at level 3, same at level 2. 
keeping in mind that it also gives you passively 10, 20, 30% cooldown reduction. If you build a Frozen Heart on Rise, which is one of his core items and still might be, depending on the way he's going to kind of get normalized to be built, it's going to overcap your CDR. And that's without going for the CDR masteries in, um, in anything, in utility or your damage. So you got to watch out for that. Um, Arcane's masteries duration increases um, by to four, five, six with rank. So at, at level 16 and you have your third level of your ult, you'll get six seconds reduced as opposed to the four. And it'll also make your passive right here go to six seconds. Um, still gives you the spell vamp. And uh, the duration is uh, a little bit less throughout the, out the game, but it does go up with level. So it seems interesting. I'll probably play a few games at least to test out how I'm enjoying it keeping in mind I'm probably rusty on my own so um, but it'll be interesting I, I played him the one game and there was a lot of opportunities I missed and that I didn't go for because I was still just trying to get a feeling of his uh, windows of opportunity with your passive but when your passive is procced and you have that extra uh, damage soaking shield the amount of damage you can put out is pretty insane and now that he has a spell that's a skill shot, you can actually stack that passive. You don't actually have to hit anything with it. You can stack that passive by just casting Qs anywhere and have it at four, be in the bush when you have like two stacks, go into the bush, get a Q for three, Q for four, and then come out of the bush and go and engage and you'll have your five stacks and uh, go ham with it and then kind of disengage until your uh, your passive's back up. So you don't always have that rapid fire cooldown reduction, but when you do have it up, if you play around it, um, I think you can make a lot more opportunistic plays around it yourself, but it's also going to give you windows of weakness, which is, I guess, what they designed it to do. So um, there we go. That's about the normal length of a patch note video, and we've done one thing. Fantastic. Uh, this was annoying. Charm no longer interrupts unstoppable, such as Malphites are, Hecarims are, or Vise are. I've been charmed by the Fox Lady, ulting as Hecarim multiple times. Puts your ult on cooldown and makes you feel real salty. So that's no fun. Glad they fixed that. Bit of bard buffs. Uh, Chimes will avoid spawning in the enemy jungle for the first five minutes. I guess that's helpful unless you're invading. That could be annoying. Uh, experience per chime goes up by one experience per minute after five minutes, so it will actually be helpful as the game goes on, because 20 experience later on in the game is kind of bleh. Uh, they changed Blitzcrank's overdrive again. Movement speed bonus decays more slowly over five seconds, and movement speed bonus cannot decay below 10%, so you won't be slow crank, I guess, anymore. Um... Increased visibility when the trap's placed in bush for Caitlyn. All right, Dr. Mundo, who is also Caitlyn, apparently. Um, just a couple of things to clear it up. Added dynamic recovery numbers to the tooltip on his passive and his ultimate. So that's kind of cool. You can actually see how your items and uh, levels are affecting those. And Infective Cleaver now refunds 100% of the cost on killing blows. So it'll be really easy to be last hitting in a denied lane. And you'll never really lose the health, even though before with your passive and whatnot, you weren't losing that much. Um, Graves, long story short, Buckshot does less damage for only hitting with the tip, more damage for hitting all three. Um, yeah, Jinx got a minimum damage reduction on her rocket, just absolutely scalped from 5 bonus AD cut to point or 0.5 to point 0.1, and those uh, three-digit numbers to these baby two-digit numbers, so... You're actually going to want to be making sure that you hit from a long range if you want the base damage. The execute damage is still there. Um, Void Spike now heals you for 20 more at level 1 on Kha'Zix, uh, normalizing out at level uh, 5. But it'll help your early clears. You won't feel like you want to get an extra level in that now because a level 1 Void Spike is healing you for essentially what a level 2 was before. So a little bit more sustain in the jungle for Kha'Zix bit of quality of life things for your team if you suck uh creeping death and blood boil if you self cast it will now cast on your closest ally as well as yourself because there's really no reason to not with a uh, change to more that it, it can be used on yourself it, it's used on yourself and a teammate and blood boil has always been yourself and a teammate if you used it um so no more greedy i'm only casting on myself even though i could have done it to both for free anyway and you no longer um have a, a quick stop when you cast Creeping Death on an ally as Mord. 
It's kind of cool, Grand Skyfall. I always ping when I'm land or going to alt anyway, but now it'll ping for you, kind of like a Rek'Sai alt, that, to let your team know. Once again, a bit of a, a newbie help there. If you aren't communicating that well, the game will force you to. Now places Shen between his target, um, closest visible enemy champion. That's helpful. I still think Shen is a less glorified Scion. Shield detonation timer went from two to three seconds. I played a Scion game today actually as well, and I definitely felt that change, and I definitely felt this change. 10% uh, max health to six. Still the same mana cost, and it's pretty hefty mana cost, and it's usually the last thing you level. I might be leveling it second now. We'll see. We're putting like extra levels into it early. Um, we'll see, but that that percentage, 1% max damage, of or 1% damage based on their max health, doesn't seem like much, but you've lost 4% altogether level 1, so that's that's pretty big. also makes it harder to last hit minions when you're really used to just getting within 1 or 2 damage properly from playing it too many times. Uh, Twitches are now hits inhibitors in Nexus. That's been 5 years in the making. Blood Scent was not picking up targets right away. Could take up to 2 seconds. Should be fixed. Fixed the bug. Wizard could accidentally fire his first arcane barrage on top of himself if he pressed R too fast. So if you're playing Xerath and you did that and you're saying it's a bug and people were saying no, you're a noob, now you have some proof. Shield Strength at level 1 up by 40, Shield Strength at level um, a billion up by 40. So just more Shield Strength, but it regenerates a lot slower, um, well 22% slower here, and it goes up to 100% effectiveness at level 13. So it'll help a lot more early in lane, but you'll have to go in for your um, moments smarter because their shield will ch uh, charge up slower. Bunch of skin retextures, apparently they're done with those now for the time being, so that's cool. The Black Cleaver, um, another huge change here. I'm going to go over it rather quickly because I'm sure a lot of people have looked into it. No longer builds out of a Brutalizer, instead it is a Phage Kindle Gem and 825 gold. Fun fact, it has 20% CDR on it, up from 10. It's a, it's a damage... It's an AD and health item that gives 20% CDR, regardless of the armor pen on it. That's amazing. It's um, gold efficiency without taking any passives into account is great. It is just great. Um, the dealing physical damage against 20 movement speed for 2 seconds, killing a unit or receiving an assist on a champion that has a Black Cleaver um, armor shred against 60 movement speed for 2 seconds. That's great too if you're a clunky uh, melee champion who really needs that uh, that item anyway. The cooldown reduction is going to help you. The health is going to help you. Um, everything about this item is amazing. Like Darius, um, if maybe Garen will be less bad with this item. But pretty crazy uh, change. I'm probably going to be building this item a lot. It no longer has um, flat armor pen, but 10 flat armor pen, not the end of the world. The change that you will feel is on champions that you want to get that, like Pantheon would get this item because you'd want the early Brutalizer and then transition it into this, but you don't build it out of an early Brutalizer now. So it'll, it might not be as good on champions that it has been, but it's definitely just going to be a core item on quite a few champions, I think. That 20% CDR is absolutely insane. Also, the armor shred duration is uh, quite long. It's from uh, 2 seconds longer, from 4 to 6. What reason that's important is because you can reapply that stack. Even if they're at max stacks, you hit them again, it reapplies that duration, so um, you can keep a lot of people armor shredded for a long period of time. And if you get an assist on any of those armor shreds, then you get that 60 movement speed. It's pretty great. And this max stacks has gone up. So you can get up to, uh, I think it's 30% armor pen on uh, multiple targets. And that's not just for yourself. Last Whisper is 35, so it's 5% more and it's instant. But that's only for yourself. This armor shred will give it to everyone on your team. So it's going to be super awesome for um, heavy AD comps. I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. I'll probably be talking about that for the next year anyway. Uh, now, Recurve Build now builds out of two daggers. So all those items that built out of two daggers were really clunky to build in your inventory. Um, like, for example, Bork will now build out of a Recurve Bow. Now deals 10 physical damage on hit. So if you want the attack speed first, you're actually getting something out of it and only taking up one inventory slot. Uh, however, it is a little more expensive because of that, but the items that it builds into have been reduced in gold cost for the most part to make the final build, for like example, the Blade of the Ruin King the same price. Um, on hit passives now be uh, benefit from, or sorry, on hit passive now benefits from lifesteal. So that percentage physical damage that you're doing to your uh, opponents, which works 
extremely well with Black Cleaver, I might add, um, will now proc Lifesteal as well. So that's great. Bork's going to be insanity. Keeping in mind that Lifesteal applies um, to the damage you actually deal. So if they have a ton of armor, you're not dealing that much damage to them anyway because it's physical. You won't get much Lifesteal. But if you stack it with um, Armor Pen, once again, the Black Laver, uh, it'll be pretty insane because you'll be healing off of something that you couldn't heal from before and stacking that passive up faster. Um, they'll synergize really well. Also, there's a passive minimum damage is now 10. It used to be 3. There was a passive minimum that it was never really explained, but it was there. Um, but yes, it also builds out a bilge water recurve and 700 gold. So it's a lot easier to build um, this item. You still build the two daggers and then you change them into the um, recurve bow and then it's 700 gold um, to combine it. So uh, instead of 900, because it got down, taken down by 200 to take into account the change that this is more expensive. So I just think Bork's going to be a lot more um, viable to to build. Not that it wasn't viable, but it's going to be a lot more um, convenient and comfortable to build. And uh, with the tank meta right now, Bork is going to be amazing. Even be even better than it was. And Black Cleaver will as well. And Recurve Bow will actually be built now on people other than Callista. Recurve Bow now builds into Runins. Uh, unique passive deals 10 bonus uh, physical damage on Hilt. Hilt. Uh, hit. Costs 100 more than it did, but it has... A buff to it. it it deals 10 physical damage on hit which isn't the most by the time you actually build that item like if that was a level one that'd be insanity um when you actually get that item it's not gonna be the most but it should apply to the bolts too i'm assuming uh wits end better build path devour better build path they both build out of the recurve bow now as well and righteous glory got nerfed by 50 health still great um some weird math on dragon's might Basically, it will affect auto attack damage champions. Um, your damage will be slightly higher, and physical spell champions that were relying on the dragon's buff will be slightly lower damage unless your abilities were higher than uh, 1.0 AD, which is quite high. Um, you can go and read that if you want. I'm not going to explain it. Math and stuff. Uh, some visual upgrades to uh, ARAM map, and um, you can now surrender earlier if you're getting destroyed. On Aram, Aram towers are stronger. They also made the Legend of the Poro King mark and dash an actual summoner spell. I don't think you can dash out. Like you could go back to the Poro King when that was the game mode. I don't think you can do that. So once you go in, you kind of you're kind of in. But Warmogs is also in. Uh, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. What were we just talking about? Aram. So you can build that and then dash in. Bloodthirster is also in Aram. Um, that crap blade is gone. It felt really garbage building this item on champions that didn't auto attack much because you had to stack up its damage by autoing. It was just really annoying. Ah la la la. What was I looking at here? Mm, let's just skip past that because I lost my train of thought. Um, more uh, more stuff that happened to things. Um, Moon flare spell blade now builds out of Negatron, so does Odin's Veil, rather than the Null Mantle, because they put that back into the game. Skin-specific skin sounds um, on a couple champion skins have been changed slash fixed. You can now add more friends to your friends list. Uh, you will now see an alert when trying to add people past the friends list cap, and you will now see the same alert when you're trying to add people who are friends list cap, which is cool. And I think that's, um, in addition, added to make the add friends feature more helpful, more friendly. Because <laughs> you can now find friends based on your Facebook friends if they have also opted in to do that, which is kind of cool, I think. So you don't have to, do you play League of Legends? And then the guy looks at you like you're a loser. Now you can avoid that awkward conversation. Fantastic. And more skins. Uh, these are actually all real cool skins. I think that J skin will be awesome. Maybe I'll have to play that dude again. Um, but yeah. Um, that went a lot longer than I wanted it to. I apologize, like I said. But um, the, the changes, the big changes, actually affect the position I play quite a lot on the Black Cleaver and possibly on Rise. Um, don't really know where he's going to fit in, but I think I'm going to put some time into just um, at least giving him a look over the next couple days. So hopefully I can deliver on that promise for those who want to see that. And that's, that'll be in between building uh, Black Cleavers on every single champion in the game because I'm really excited about that change as well. 
So um, other than that, I'll uh, wrap it up here. Um, won't linger on any longer. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Um, like I said, I'm back from vacation now, so I'll be back to streaming normally for those who were missing the stream. And uh, I will be streaming tonight as well. So hopefully see you guys there. For those of you who are seeing this on the day it actually came out, other than that, that last kind of message was rather useless, unless you have a time machine. But anyway, guys, take it easy, and we'll see you next time.